Hi, I'm Ross Jacobs. And this is the fourth and final video on the series of lunging. And this one's going to be about straightness. I'll put a link to the other three videos in the description. I urge you, to, if you haven't watched the others, to watch them first because there's a reason that they're in a sequence. Um, I think they complement each other if you start at the beginning and work through. So straightness. Straightness is important in a horse and we're always striving to improve our straightness with our horses. Most horses are not born <coughs> with a high degree of straight, natural straightness. I've got one horse, Riley, and he's pretty straight just by his nature. And then we have a horse like Six, who's really crooked by her nature. Um, and it's a lot of work to help her maintain straightness. So the importance of straightness is the fact that if a horse is straight or balanced, I use those terms interchangeably a lot, if they're straight, they are using their body equally. That means their left and their right side are working equally. And that also then means that they're maximizing their athletic ability. They're not working one part of their body any harder than they need to and then another part less than they need to. They're, main, they're using them maximally and that's what straightness is really meant to do. So things that are hard on a horse's body like collection or um, say a horse that's pulling a plow or a wagon or um, a racehorse that's traveling down the track. Those horses are really working hard and the more they are straight, the straighter they are, the more power they're able to summon from their body. The other point, the other thing about straightness is that if you've got a horse that's pretty straight, it helps ensure the long-term soundness of a horse. The straighter they are, the more they're sharing, the body sharing the load of this work, the less likely as they get older that they're going to have soundness issues because the body is sharing the load instead of one part doing a lot more work than the other part. So you'll see this a lot in, um, in race horses, you know, they're usually pretty crooked and they're broken down very young. Endurance horses, they do hundreds of miles or kilometers, whatever you want to talk in. And those horses are often very crooked. And by the time they're in their early teens, many of them are ready for the retirement home. Any sort of performance, show jumpers, eventers, so the straighter they are, the chance are that they're going to be able to work for longer. Now in lunging, straightness is a really good, it really comes up as an issue a lot. Most horses we will see are, are pretty crooked and they'll often be counterbent. She's a good example of a horse that gets counterbent really easily. She doesn't do much lunging. Well, she doesn't do much of anything. I don't work her very much usually only pull her out when I have to do some videos and then for the rest of the year she sits around and does nothing. So she struggles with straightness on a circle. Um, if I pulled out Riley it would be dead easy, you'd think I was a magician. Anyway, so I'm going to first talk about how do you know if a horse is crooked or straight on a circle. I want you to imagine that this rope represents a line of a turn or a circle. And I'm going to show you how the horse arranges his feet when he's following that circle or that line in a balanced way. Imagine my hands are the horse's front feet, my feet are the horse's hind feet. If I'm going to ride this line here, my inside front foot must step on the line. So as the line moves to the left in this case, so should my front foot. So my front left front is going to go to the left. It's going to go to the left. It's going to go to the left. It's not going to go to the right. It's going to go to the left. If it goes to the right, the horse is leaking out through the turn. 
Now the hind feet do something, some, do something a little different. And that's because of the conformation and the biomechanic limitations of the way a horse is put together. But I'm not going to go into that in this video. So what happens is that the front foot, inside foot goes to the inside, but the hind foot goes to the outside. So the left foot goes left, the left hind goes right. The left foot goes left, the left hind goes right. It doesn't go there. It goes there. And that's very important. The amount that um, the discrepancy on how it deviates from the line will depend on the tightness of the circle and how balanced a horse is. So that's basically how that works. Now I'm going to use my Mate 6 to maybe demonstrate that with a real horse. Here we see Six travelling on a circle to the right. Her right front foot steps to the right on the line of the circle, while her right hind foot steps to the left, to the outside of the circle, and her right hind and her left hind are almost travelling on the same track. Watch closely as she does this in slow motion. Now look at why this is happening. Notice her inside eye. She's thinking to the right as she travels to the right. It's that thought that keeps her on the circle balanced. But I want to give you a tip that makes it fairly easy. And that is, you have to understand the geometry of a circle. So if any of you studied Pythagoras at school, you'll know that a circle is a shape. With the center of the circle to the edge of the line of the circle, that distance is the same at any point on that circle. I hope that's clear. There's your circle, there's your middle. The distance between that and there is the same as that and there, and that and there. So, here's my tip. If we assume that we are the center of the circle, and we assume our horse is on the circumference of the circle, then the distance between us and their shoulder and us and their hip should be approximately the same. If we assume that I'm lined up to be in the middle of the circle, so I'm in the middle of her body, and the distance between me and her shoulder and me and her hip is pretty close to being the same. That angle and that angle is pretty much the same. So if she's straight on the circle, as she goes forward around the circle and comes around the corner, that distance shouldn't be maintained. That distance between my shoulder and between her shoulder and I and her hip and I should be maintained to be close to be the same. So I ask her to just walk forward. So as she comes around the corner to go on the circle, I'm encouraging her to get the distance between her shoulder and me and her hip and me the same. And it looks pretty good there. She's following the line pretty accurately. If her shoulder is further away from me, like that, then I know she's leaking out. When she comes around here, there you can see her shoulder is closer to me and her hip is leaking out. For now she's pretty accurate and her front inside foot is on the line of the circle and her hind inside foot is going to the outside of the circle, pushing under the middle of her body. So, that's the whole idea of straightness. Now what do you do about it when she's not? Let's take, for example, a horse that's very, very crooked. Or it doesn't, hasn't ever been lunged before and doesn't understand it. One of the things I'll often do, and I've done this many times at clinics with horses who are incredibly crooked, and go around almost collapsing on their shoulder counter bent like that. One of the things I'll do is I will come in under here and I will hold them under the chin. And I will guide them from this feel. I will try to guide them to be on the circle. So in my mind, I have an idea where that circle is out there. 
and I'll use my hand to try and get her to follow the line of that circle with her front feet and her hind feet and I'll also ask her to soften to my hand. If she's leaning and pushing on my hand, we're having an argument. If she, pardon me, if she's soft in my hand, then she and I are on the same page and we're having a, com a conversation. So I'm going to ask Six to go forward. Now I'm going to set it up when she comes around again. Here she's looking pretty good, but she's going to come around and I'm going to set it up that she's struggling. And I'm going to see how I show you what I might do. So now I'm setting up, she's pushing on my hand. I stop her, step her back to the outside, like in a leg yield. And then I say, come forward until she, and she needs to be soft in my hand. If she's pushing forward, crowding me, dropping that shoulder, and I'll wait till she comes around again so you can see from this angle. So she's dropping that shoulder here. I'll say no. Block her just with my left hand under her chin. And then I get soft in my hand and I'll say come around. So that's that example. If she was dropping her hip towards me, I might do that. Just block her and she'll run into my hand. Do it again. And it's just fingertip control. And if she's tight and heavy, then I don't release until she softens and weighs nothing in my hand. And as she gets better, I can then, I can then give her more rope and more rope and more rope. So we get further apart and she can be out there and it weighs nothing. So, and eventually, as you can imagine, you could have her on a 20 foot rope, a lunge line, you could be doing this at a walk and a trot and a canter. As she gets better and better, you give her more rope, she can go faster speeds and you don't need to be so close, so you don't need to back up so much. And if it falls apart, climb up up the rope, shorten it, help her, then leave her alone, get out of the way, and continue the work. So that's something I'll do a lot with a horse that's struggling very hard. Just to show them where that feel is presenting them, for them to follow. On a horse that's not so bad, I might actually not be in so close. And I might ask her to step out. And we're going to set it up so that she's very crooked. You'll see how she collapses here a lot. Now the hips are a little close to me, so I'm going to say, hey, step the hip out. Come on. There. Now go. Good. Now the hips in again. So I ask her to draw out. I put a little bump in the rope. I need her forward though. She needs to go forward. There. And she can follow that feel. And that looks a lot better. little feel in there because the shoulders leaving there so if the hips dropping in that's what I might do I might I say take your hip out because the thoughts leaving to the outside change your thought now here I might say leg yield out because there she could be dropping in with her shoulder so if she's dropping in there I will Ask her to slow her front feet down and push her to the outside. I, I walk towards her body, but slow down the front feet so that her forward's not so strong. And she goes a little sideways. And then when she yields to that, I let her go back on the circle. As she gets better, the circle can get bigger. You can start to ask her for more life and go into the work, do, work at the trot. And then eventually, as that gets good, you can go and work at the canter. It takes time though. It takes a lot of time and you don't rush these things. You don't go to the next step until she's already better. This is really important stuff. You need to be aware of when your horse is crooked and when it's not, and you're always working towards it. Um, so I think that's something worth considering. Now, all these videos on lunging, I'm not showing you how to do stuff. I'm trying to give you ideas and principles please come up with your own ideas get imaginative get brave if you mess up that's okay realize that love on your horse start again 
it's really important that you don't try to copy anybody because your horse and you are going to be different from the horse you see in other people's videos or read in their books and not only that they're going to be not only are they different but even moment to moment they're going to change so what you do with your horse one moment five seconds later you might have to do the exact opposite because things changed so don't try to copy anyone but get a grasp of the ideas and be brave don't say oh now what did he tell me to do i can't do it and not do anything if you want things to improve doing nothing or doing the same thing over and over and over is not an option so i really urge you to go out and experiment and play and love your horses and have fun with them and i hope some of these videos have given you some useful thoughts good night alice wherever you